All right, welcome to the Sales Mindset Podcast. Uh, my name is Dennis DePasquale, Dr. D. I am the host of this podcast where we basically talk about all things sales, answer questions, uh, discuss things that are important for that. I'm here with Sam and Brian. I'll let them introduce themselves. Yeah, my name is Sam Hendrickson. Uh, uh, or I will be graduating college at the end of the summer and hopefully moving into a sales role after that. Uh, my name is Brian Gurgis, a uh, recent graduate of the University of Florida as well, into sales and uh, real estate, and looking to uh, sit down here and talk with sales a little bit. Yeah, if you may have met some of these guys if you're uh, purchasing or working through our sales mindset course. So what we're going to do today is just basically introduce ourselves and interview each other so that you get to know us, since this is episode one. You want to know who these three gentlemen are sitting in front of you, standing in front of you, or as you're driving into your work. So, so first question, I'm going to actually talk to these guys because they're so fresh into this. I want to know why sales? What, what, what drove you to do something about sales? So Brian. Sales is pretty much everything that I've done so far, lipped into it kind of on accident from when I started college, started selling advertising for the newspaper as I was very committed to ruling with an iron fist at the newspaper, but then, you know, grew up a little bit. And sales is just kind of everything. Mm -hmm. So I uh, ended up breaking into a few different fields, especially real estate. Definitely like meeting new people, being social, and it just kind of fits all the boxes pretty well. All right. What about you, sir? Yeah, I would have to agree a lot with Brian. I uh, really didn't know what I wanted to do my uh, first couple years of college. And luckily, I got into a uh, professional selling class with Dr. Tufts. And I just really fell in love with his career path and what he did. Mm -hmm. And sales just... He opened my eyes that sales can really be a way to serve people and really just help out others. And that's something that I really enjoy doing. And that's why I decided to go with sales. Right, right. Dr. Stephen Tufts is a fantastic uh, colleague of mine at the University of Florida. So my answer to that, my own question there is actually much longer uh, and drawn out. I, you know, when I first had my business up in Philadelphia, I had no idea what sales was and just kind of fumbled through it. I got lucky, I would say, uh, by and large. But when I came to the University of Florida and got over to the business school, I was asked to teach a sales class and I, my reaction, because I had the stereotypical view of sales that many of you may have had at some point in time, where I was like, I'm not a salesperson, what are you talking about? Um, but it was pointed out that I did have, did have a business for the better part of a decade. And so I had to know sales for something. So when I got into it, what I loved about it wasn't so much the topics. The topics in sales are great, but it was the response that I realized really understanding sales can do. And it was the the building of confidence that I saw with my students that really let me know that sales is like a great equalizer. Uh, if you just put the right amount of work into it and you have the right energy behind it, you can basically do anything, rule the world, if you will, with it. And so I find it to be probably one of the best topics to teach when it comes to really mastering life. Yeah, uh, going off that too, mm -hmm. uh, that was one of the reasons I did was so focused and decided, yeah, this is 100% what I'm going to do because it was the first class where I was like, this is just a real world skill that is applicable to my daily life. Even if I'm not selling something, mm -hmm. this is just real stuff. And there's other classes like that in college, but I found a majority of classes I was taking, if it was outside of that class, the knowledge really wasn't that useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hear that. With doing sales from coming into college, I had one view of it in the way that I was doing things and then hopping into the kind of the sales program, working with Tufts first and then turning literally everything on its head. I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm doing this entirely incorrectly as opposed to looking at it as this objective oriented thing where it's, you know, a very practical, hard skill set up. I have to be incredibly organized. Not that that's not important, but I was neglecting the entire other side, like the social side and the ways that you can enjoy it, things you can pull out of it, relationship building, mm -hmm. the way of prospecting. Prospecting was like the smallest dot on the map. And it's probably the most important thing that yeah. you can do in the process. Mm -hmm. And then going through the rest of the program, taking your class and actually utilizing it and what I do on a daily basis, it just kind of like changed everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, Sam, when you talk about it, it's life skills, it, it is it, even in dating. You know, mm -hmm. if you look at dating coaches yeah. out there, one of the things that dating coaches will do is that you've got to get out there and you've got to do it. Uh, and uh, you've got to go out there and at least talk to people or, or else it's not going to happen. Uh, and, you know, to 
to what you talked about with prospecting, mm-hmm. yes, it's the foundation of, of what you're putting out there. So if you want to, you know, if you want to run a business, you got to try running a business. If you want to get out there and talk to people, you got to actually do it. And that's that equalizer part yeah. that I really love. Mm-hmm. And that's where you're really going to learn. It's not going to be perfect when you first get out there, but mm-hmm. you're going to learn so much more from those failures right off the bat than you would if you, say, waited a month and tried to learn mm-hmm. slowly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all about like hesitation. I think if you are afraid and you don't jump into it or you delay, 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 or like, oh, I'm going to strategize this differently. I'm going to contact this person. They said no, so I'm not going to contact again. You miss out on like the valuable steps that you actually get into. I feel like hitting a wall multiple times is more telling or more in what do you call enlightening than just sinking it the first time. That call reluctance, that fear is is such a big thing. You look at how much time you can actually waste. You don't think of it as a lot of time if you're just sitting there getting yourself ready for 30 seconds to a minute. Mm. But if you've got 100 calls to make, there's an hour, there's two hours out of your time yeah. that you could have actually been sitting there. So you really learn how to manage your time when it comes to sales and, and apply it elsewhere when it comes down to it. Um, plus, you said relationship building even outside of that, learning how to actually actively listen to someone yeah. instead of you know thinking about what you want to say next. So with you two and your your fresh entry into sales, what has been I guess one of your challenges? Um. Well, I'll I'll start. Mm-hmm. So, I like uh, Brian was talking about earlier with prospecting. I mean, that was something that in my education I kind of glossed over and didn't really appreciate how important it really is. And I'm hoping to hit the ground running. And like we've talked about, you know, you're going to fail and hit those walls and you'll figure out where everything's at, Mm -hmm. what works and what doesn't. And so that was something that I wish I didn't neglect as much, but I'm excited to really go out there and try to figure out what, what's the best practices here? You know, how, how sociable do you need to be? Mm -hmm. How, uh, what should you look for in a client and a prospect? And, you know, just become more aware of that. Mm-hmm. A lot of it was, for me, was related to impatience, almost not understanding the level of involvement, almost not taking it seriously enough by taking it too seriously, where especially being younger, I would go in and talk to somebody significantly older than me and I would sit down and be like, no, I don't want this. And I would try to dance like a monkey to present it to them without, <laughs> you know, building any rapport, knowing who they were before I went in. And if it didn't work out, I'm like, all right, well, that didn't work out. And then I'll reach out again or call and they say, no, I don't want this. And then not call again, not understanding the idea of almost like I needed to take it more seriously in terms of being pushy, but also easing back a little bit and stop being so serious about like, oh, this is a framework that I need to follow and I need to do it perfectly. And if I mess up with this person or they say no, then it's not going to work as opposed to like real life human conversations where you might stutter or like you have a disagreement the first time or they don't want to talk to you the first time because they're in a bad mood. It's like kind of like rolling with the punches and going with the flow. I think I was just too impatient. Mm -hmm. So you've had sales experience in a few different areas. Sure. Which one, which one would you not go back to? Advertising. Okay. Um, well, print advertising. Well, I, I even enjoyed doing social media advertising and business marketing type of stuff because that was fun mm-hmm. as you would sit down with a client and you would understand their needs. And that was so integral to the service. Mm-hmm. But when you're selling ad space in a newspaper, you're doing like column inches and whatnot. It's very it's it's a very like one dimensional product in a way mm-hmm. I can sell. You know, you should do it at this time or date because this is more relevant to you and whatnot. But beyond that, it is just ad space in a newspaper. And I had all the like, these little value propositions or things that I would throw in there. But the reality is, is it's print advertising. Nobody really wants to do it anyway. Mm-hmm. And everybody knows I, I work for the Florida Alligator newspaper here in town. And it's not the biggest town in the world. And it's the most significant newspaper here, including the actual local newspaper. It's probably bigger than the Gainesville Sun. So everybody already knows who you are. You come and say, hello, I'm here from the Florida Alligator. And I get out. Like, why are you here? And you contacted me two years ago. You contacted me every six months for the last two to three years. Um, yeah, you, you mentioned the alligator. I'm sure more challenging is uh, something called gator greenbacks, which uh, is another local product in town. But it's, it's something that um, a lot of businesses don't necessarily see students as extremely valuable mm. uh, customers to have. So I could imagine walking in how, how hard that, that would be to sell. Yeah, it, it was something else. I actually built a, relation, a little bit of a relationship with the Gator Greenbacks guys because they wanted to put 
so they wanted to do some digital advertising later on mm -hmm. and they said the same thing in terms of the process of their sales process where it would either be super easy because they got it or it was just almost impossible because it's almost more one dimensional to like a coupon book somebody doesn't see the value of that product and there's like no yeah you know, they mm -hmm. don't want it right. uh what was your first experience in sales i remember my first sale and I remember when I first started my business. So a little history on me back in 2003. So almost 20 years ago, uh, I started Kanaz Creative Services and it was photography, graphic design, web design. And my first mistake was just assuming I could plop a website up on the internet and everyone would come to me. Uh, so step two was joining a networking group. And, and so Step three was actually building the relationships. So I can't think of any one first experience that was me selling. Mm -hmm. uh, but I remember my first sale, or first major sale, I guess you would say, which was the New Jersey State Police. And I remember when I closed the sale, and I remember thinking that it was stupid easy. But... It took me so long to get to that point. So taking it a little further back, when I had started my business, I needed to do something else at the same time. And so I was going door to door selling, I guess, for a nonprofit. I wouldn't have thought about it as selling for a nonprofit, but going door to door, canvassing, getting signatures, getting donations. And that's where I learned how to ask for money. And it was asking for money for nothing. You know, it's mm -hmm. altruism, it's air, it's just good feelings and the hope that whatever we were doing aligned with what they wanted us to do and, and, and so forth. So after doing that for probably about three months, I was sitting in this individual's office and I just dropped the number that in my mind was too high. And it seemed like forever until he was like, oh yeah, that's no problem. And I, you know, looking back at it, I know that it wasn't that long of a pause, but I just remember the fear of thinking that that number that I was going to throw out was way too high. Yeah, yeah. And in hindsight, it was way too low. So 20 years ago, $5,000 for a website, and I didn't understand how to really price myself out properly. You know, easy, easy money. Uh, but it didn't feel like it at the time. And I think that's again, goes into how a lot of new salespeople must feel, especially when they're selling a product and they're like, oh, this is, this is expensive. How am I going to ask for $1,000? How am I going to ask for $20,000 or $100,000, depending on what the product happens to be? Yeah. Uh, numbers, especially for you guys coming out of college, those numbers might seem enormous to you. Mm -hmm. But uh, when the value's there, it doesn't matter. Now, I was selling this to a museum, so there was no ROI per se that went along with it. But the idea is that I was creating something for them that they needed to have, yeah. that they wanted to have, that would help their mission overall. And it was for a division that, that ran their museum. And it was there in hindsight. Uh, so that's... Not so much the story of my first sale, but how I got to my first big sale and how I think it really clicked on how to... I didn't even think about it as asking for money. I or, or I didn't think about it as selling. I thought about it as asking for money. Yeah. Uh, I just thought about it as doing business. And that's, I guess, the, you know, the biggest misconception with sales is that it's just... People don't know it's just doing business. Yeah. So what would you change about that uh, interaction? Like, tell, <laughs> what would you tell yourself before going into there? I had already learned not to be afraid of the silence. Uh, I had already learned how to have the conversation. What I wish I knew, so it's not so much what I would tell myself, I wish I knew business. And it's funny, when I started my business, a friend of mine, my undergraduate degree is computer science. A friend of mine gave me, and I still have it, it's probably sitting behind one of you guys right now, her marketing textbook. And he's like, you need to read this. And it was just way, I didn't know how to learn. I didn't know how to teach myself that stuff yet. So I just kind of was like way overwhelmed by it. That's why people take classes because sometimes going through a book is difficult. YouTube didn't exist to teach myself marketing. So 
the biggest thing I wish I had known was how to brace myself out, which whenever I do workshops now as someone who's a, a lecturer who is a professor in marketing, that's one of the biggest questions that the uh, like veteran entrepreneurs or low-income entrepreneurs, people who don't have that background and they're just taking these boot camps, like, okay, I need to know how to price myself out. And I'm like, oh, I feel you, I feel you. So here's what you need to think about. Uh, and most people don't charge enough uh, and the value is usually going to be there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's who we are, that's what we do, that's what we're gonna be here for, is to give you guys advice on sales. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, whatever it happens to be. If this is on a commentable platform such as YouTube, please feel free to add your comment or head to drdennisd.com, look for the podcast link, and there's a section where you can add uh, to submit for your own questions that I will look to answer. In the meantime, have a great week.